Well, welcome everyone to our latest Insight interview. I'm very excited to bring Kelly Orvik on the show today. And she has some um, great things to share with us about G Suite specifically for leaders just like you. So Kelly, can you give us a, an introduction? Let us know who you are and why you decided to become an educational leader. All right, hi Catherine, thank you for having me. So I am Kelly Orvik and I am from Central California and this is my 19th year of education. And, um, you know, I, I've taught 14 of those years, four of the years were as an instructional coach. And now I'm kind of back in the classroom part-time as teacher, coach, and tech coordinator. And um, why I became an educational leader. You know, I um, it's been a journey. I don't know that I ever had a, um, I didn't sit down one day and say, I'm going to become an educational leader. So I think I kind of morphed into it and it, it was a series of years. And I think if I was to think back on um, where it kind of all began, you know, my early years of teaching started um, back in those days, I thought it was really rough. But what I realized now is that's where I had the, that's what had the greatest impact on me. And that was at my first year, I was scooped up before I even finished my student teaching. So I was teaching a sixth grade class and doing student teaching simultaneously. My second year of teaching, I was asked to do a combo because this is what we do with our new teachers. So year two, three, four, and five, I was a combo teacher, five and six. So in those years, um, I was in survival mode. Uh, I was really just trying to survive. So I had a lot of things that were pretty impactful in my, in my educational experience. Like, Coming through all that, being a new teacher, I um, in survival mode. I had I was doing things that would become buzzwords later that I didn't understand those words at that time, like student-centered learning, um, because I couldn't teach both grades. And I it was it was where I experienced my first F word in education, um, fidelity to the core. So um, you know I couldn't teach to the core, I couldn't teach fidelity to the core teaching a combo class, the way with the minutes that I was given in the pacing guide. So I was really, um, I learned very quickly how to backward plan from objectives. Um, I learned how to operate in a student-centered environment because I needed that in order to survive. And uh, those were the years that I found online supplemental everything and anything that I could get digital made my life and their life easier. So um, as the years progressed and Google came on scene, the more I could get into that. I, I really actually started with this um, site called Guru Learning. I don't even know if they're around anymore, but um, but it was in that process that I learned a lot of things that later I would go back to often, the buzzwords, you know, like student-centered learning. Um, that's, I, I picked up along the way in those years, uh, Daily Five. So I was using Daily Five practices and that's where I had a lot of student-centered practices that were going on in my classroom. And so that was survival really, just to get through those combination years. And um, then I went back to, cause I refused to take another combo. I, I was so good at it that I was asked again that, and I just finally said, no, someone else needs to do this. And I went straight sixth grade. So then my 15th year, I picked up the coaching position and um, was over 16 sites in Lodi Unified for four years. And, um, and so that's been the journey. So I kind of morphed into leadership and uh, then I was, I have my current role as part of the role as tech coordinator. And I think that just, uh, that came because I, I ultimately, the more I supported teachers, the more I realized the power of Google and I started seeking out the certifications. And in doing that, I started presenting. And so it just kind of morphed and um, unfolded. So I, I kind of grew into this role. Good. I like that. That's a, a good way to say it. You kind of leveled up a little bit at a time, I would say, in an organic way. Excellent. So you mentioned a little bit about Google. So G Suite or Google Suite of tools are free. I know you talk about that a lot to uh, schools and districts. Uh, but what have you found that's especially helpful to leaders, um, to administrators, whether it's district level, school site level? Um, what What tools are best for them and how uh, how do that how does that help them in their role yeah i think um i mean it's my experience and i know mine is my experience and my kind of limited sort of big district not very small district but uh there's always been sort of in my world a discrepancy between um 
how information is shared and disseminated at the leadership level versus how information is disseminated and shared in the classroom. Uh, and one of the one of my big eye opening uh, moments was a, at a third year mark with a teacher who I had we had made uh, much progress in her classroom. She was very low tech skill. Um, we had some Promethean panels that were being utilized and she was giving it her best. She was a math lead at a high school. So she was, she was one of the leaders at that school and she was not what I would call high tech, um, but was open and learning. Um, but in the third year, I entered the beginning of the year to see how she was doing and where, where we were going to go and start planning for that year. And her Promethean panel was faced backwards and uh, in the corner and unplugged in her classroom. And so I was lucky enough that I had the relationship that I could ask her how that happened. And she said that I can't do this anymore. Um, I am receiving as the math lead information from the leadership level in our district at, at my site and the district level. And then I am tasked with the job of taking that back to my math department teachers. And I keep having to do double the work because it's coming to me in this format and I have to convert everything and get it to this format and it's costing me so much time. So I think the biggest uh, aha for me was that moment to understand that if we had everybody in the same system utilizing G Suite because it is free and, it, and it's a matter of training, there'd be seamless communication and collaboration from leadership all the way through to the classroom, which I think that's my dream, honestly, is to get that seamless communication all the way down. So that to me is a power in it. And as you know, there's so many avenues we can take with that, but uh, it can be as simple as, um, you know, the documentation that's on the websites because we can take our docs into our publishable PDFs if we need to. So we can make some flip books or PDF books that are front facing for our, our public view for our families or or we can use collaborative documents and sheets to organize and discuss. And I mean, so we can start small and grow it, but we really need to all be in the same system. Excellent. So um, how would you say, what's a great place to start if there are people that haven't really delved into this yet and they're still kind of living in those two worlds where um, the administration perhaps aren't using the tools as much as the teachers. And how would you suggest that they actually just get started? What's a good like, first app or first step in in making that shift yeah that's the that's the million dollar question so i think um and i've kicked this one around so hard because there's so many places you can because google is cyclical right it all it all plays together and it all plays together nicely so where do we start so i think if i was uh i think for me i've decided that classroom google classroom even though it has it is pretty robust now and there are some pretty uh, there's some training involved in that but we've got we've got many of our teachers there so um we don't have all of our teachers there we've got work to do but i do think um, it's it's in the classrooms for the most part at some level if they if they're not using it consistently they at least are familiar with it and so if we were to show administration or leaders in the district how we can use this tool to disseminate um, information and collaborate and communicate. So it's an amazing, you know, this. it's an amazing document distribution center and it's awesome at communication. So that piece in itself, you know, uh, and it easily moves into calendars because classrooms have calendars built into them. So you can morph, you know, you can go from one, I think I would start with just the basics of it. Um, especially at the leadership level, I don't think it's gotten the justice that it, like there's not a lot of talk out there about how we can organize information between leadership and teachers. It's more about teachers to students, but the tools work the same. So our, if we could train our leaders in Google Classroom and show them how they can really use this for project management. Um, a great example of this is I was presenting um, Fall Q, this past Fall Q, and in Palm Springs, and I had, um, I had a maintenance leader in the room and I had an instructional technology director in the room. And they went crazy when they started realizing the power of Google Classroom. They had not really been experienced. They, they had seen it in classrooms with students, but they didn't understand the power. And when they began to see that they could put projects in there with dates, due dates on them, and assign them to specific team members, they went crazy. They, they, they took off with the whole session, and, and uh, it turned into a project management session 
with Google Classroom. So it's got a lot of power and it does have moving pieces, but I think I would start there. That's great. I like that. What about um, what about those leaders that are saying, well, you know, I don't know how I would learn this. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not real techie. Um, you know, I like to print out my emails, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but what? how would you respond to them um, for them to be able to get started with something like this? No. Yeah, I think. Um... You know, I get real passionate about this because that, you know, isn't that the million dollar question too? Like, um, where do we start? How do we get there? Um, I think we just start. And I, I know everybody's busy. We're all busy. And, um, but tech is not going to stop changing or becoming uh, uh, more improved or even more efficient. And it's coming at us faster and faster and so you know we are living in the information era and you know these are buzzwords but they're not really buzzwords kids do deserve it we do have we do have to do this so i think the payoff is uh I, maybe i would start with um just really sharing and showing that it's so worth it because time that four letter word time is one that i hear so often like there's just not time to do this we don't have the time to do this i've got this and I've got 50 things on my plate that I have to go and handle over here. So I don't have time to do that. But if we invest a little of the time here, so maybe incremental steps, taking steps towards um, understanding and, and basic, I would start basic communication. Like if you're just using it maybe as a space to communicate with your staff. You know, one of the things I would love to see is uh, a hub where all information, so all staff's eyes can go to one place to know what's happening at the school. Because I know many times events come and go and in the process of trying to plan those events, there are people who get left out of the email threads and there are people who didn't come to the meeting that day and now they are unaware of what is happening, but they are tasked with knowing or doing part of that. So if it's in a classroom and we just start there, I think, um, we have to just start. We, it doesn't get any easier not starting. It gets harder and harder as we don't start because tech is is ubiquitous and it's getting, uh, and we're going to become, you know, I explain to teachers often, It's just, for me, it's the same analogy when we have a, a staff member working on a Windows 7 machine, wanting to know why it won't work. And I say to them, and it always works, they always understand as I say, you're on a Windows browser that has lost its connection to it's a mother and the farther away from it's a windows seven machine that was built back several years and the farther away from in years that it gets the farther away that mother is getting from it and it can't connect and communicate and i feel like that is what is happening with you know our leadership down to our teachers because we're doing things at the classroom level and the more comfortable that they get with these tools that uh they're proving themselves in the classroom you know they're very powerful and so the further away that these admins are getting from the teachers uh practices there, that connection is kind of um, widening, and I think so. We just have to do it. We just have to get in there somewhere. I love that attitude. Just start. Just do something. Yeah. And ultimately, too, all of this, the time that will be saved, the automation, um, like you're saying, with classroom to calendar and such and, and things like that. Um, what about sharing settings? What about the fear of um, am I going to lose everything? Am I uh, going to accidentally uh, share something or someone can edit something that was supposed to have not been um, shared or edited, you know, in that way? Uh, how would you address those concerns? Those are real concerns, right? Those are real concerns. Um, I, I think you have to kind of start there maybe. Maybe that's where you start as you go into classroom and understand the dynamics of how we are embedding information in there, you cannot leave out the permissions and the sharing. Because if people are not understanding, I think team drives is a big piece of this. I think that helps to protect us because team drives is a very, uh, it's a very purposeful sharing. Like, you know, you create a drive uh, and you put, you purposely put your team in there and you give them roles. So team drives to me is maybe a safer bet, but you still have the document side permissions that you can get into and change. So I, it is a real, that's a real thing. We've got, um, um, you know, information out there that we can't, we have to be careful about. And so I, it's just part of the training. You have to, 
you cannot ignore it. When people aren't, you know, trained, things happen. <laughs> Bad things can happen. Sure, absolutely. But but you're saying it's worth it, right? Oh, it's totally worth it to me. No, yes, absolutely. I think you know this, and it's not as hard as it sounds. Like I, I think um, at first it's confusing. It was confusing for me when I first started, but then when I began to like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Because the one thing that I love about Google G Suite in general, and in my presentation that I get with give with leaders, I have a picture of a doc, a sheet, a slide, and I think it's a drawing with the menu drop downs on them. And once you learn one, you learn almost, you learn them all. So, you know, there's just a slight difference between the menus. And so that's the beauty of it is, you, you know, it really does roll over into the other documents. So if you start with a Google Doc and you begin to understand, this is a document that's very similar to Word that I've used for years. Um, my toolbars are now very similar. And when I get the sharing permissions down and then I decide I want to go create a slide or vice versa, the menus are going to be very, very similar. The process is almost identical. And that is a wonderful thing to know, because then what you're saying is like, you know, your advice, just get started, get started with any of the tools, because I would agree that the verbiage, where the buttons are, the sharing settings, all the same. And so your learning curve is going to be a lot easier uh, once once you have just started to get to know one tool really well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that's awesome. So where would you suggest that people go if they want to learn more? They want more training. Uh, they want to kind of delve into this a little bit more. Um, how can they either contact you or are there um, websites or um, places that you would refer them to? Yeah. So. Um well, maybe I'll make a plug for my upcoming site. So um, it's just www.kellyorvik.com and it is under construction, but that will be um, a site that is going to be filled with blog posts all around G Suite and leaders and how they can implement and practice uh, some of these things that we spoke about. It's also going to have some courses uh, ultimately that will be launched and it's going to be all directed toward leadership. So um, hopefully, and it will be done in a way that if they can come in and do maybe 10 minutes of a course, so maybe one lesson, and if that's all they had is 10 minutes, they can walk away and come back when they have another 10 minutes and progress through a series of courses that are gonna be incremental, hence the incremental drip. So um, that is one, there's my plug. But I think, you know, I, you can find me on Twitter at Techie Tech on Twitter, you know, we're both um, Twitter, PLN, and I know a lot of people are kind of afraid of the social media places, but um, I have found, you know, so many things on Twitter following people that, and so you can just hashtag Google leadership and you will get an entire list of resources that people are sharing out about how leadership is um, utilizing G Suite in their role. You also can go to YouTube. There's tons of stuff on YouTube. Um, I know your site, Leaders Connect, you've got a ton of stuff on your site as well. So there's just people out there. I think you just get into the social media and not be afraid and um, search up some hashtags, follow you and I and anybody we follow. And I think the rest is going to fall into place. Absolutely. I love that. And I would agree. Uh, there's actually a searchable database um, on siteleadersconnect.org where you can look one of the... Um, expertise that uh, leaders that have wanted to be on that website and share the information um, is G Suite. So, uh, you know, if you are looking for more people to follow, um, that their websites are on there many times if they have one. So that's another uh, place to go as well. So absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Kelly. Do you have any last words of inspiration or advice um, for our listeners before we uh, close out? Well, I, for me personally, and I hope I can share this out, um, you know, I feel like, I know sometimes we get dogged down in just the business of education, but I just feel like that education right now is in one of the most exciting times ever. And, um, and to me, like, I, I'm a big proponent of, I don't want to spend money that I don't have to spend. And so for me, that's, everybody's like, is Google paying you? And I'm like, I wish Google was paying me, <laughs> you know, because I plug them all the time. But I think, you know, I'm all about, uh, free and easy and um, and and then what is not just free and easy but what is going to be the, the best possible outcome at the learner level because we are all in this to promote learning like we want to make it the best possible um, 
learning environment for our students in our classrooms. And so I think this is one of those tools, and I'm passionate about that, that if it were to come from top all the way down, we would see uh, massive shifts in our data, which we're all looking at as a leader. So for me, I'm like, just start, just do it, just go there. It's not, it's simple. Google's all about, um, that's their motto, right? Their, their products are all easy. They, they put them together so that everybody can use them. And, um, and we're all here for the kids because kids deserve it. So I, that's my, that's my passion. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. So as Kelly said, just get started. And if you uh, need more information, definitely visit her website. As always, uh, make sure you check out uh, siteleadersconnect.org for more insight interviews, as well as that searchable database. And uh, thanks again, Kelly, for being here. And everybody have a wonderful day.